Hey everyone, in this video I would like to introduce you to the most useful contraption for managing heat in oxygen not included. This contraption is commonly called as the AquaTuner cooling loop and its purpose is to cool various things by utilizing the functionality of the AquaTuner. It is composed of two major pieces, an AquaTuner and a steam turbine. The AquaTuner is a machine which takes liquid into its input, reduces its temperature by 14 degrees Celsius, and outputs the same cooled liquid in the output. By doing so, the AquaTuner heats itself in the process. The cooled liquid coming out of the AquaTuner, which is often called coolant, can then be used for cooling other things like other machines or rooms. However, since the AquaTuner heats up while cooling the liquid, it itself needs to be cooled, otherwise it will eventually overheat and break. This is where the second piece comes in, the steam turbine. The steam turbine takes steam in temperatures above 125 degrees Celsius in its input, generates some power and outputs water at 95 degrees Celsius. This principle can be used to both cool the aqua tuner and generate some power as well. Now, an aqua tuner placed inside a chamber filled with water, together with a steam turbine right above it, is the basis for the aqua tuner cooling loop. During the operation of the aqua tuner, the water around it begins to heat up due to the heat emitted by the aqua tuner. Eventually, the temperature of this water passes 100 degrees Celsius and vaporizes the water into steam. This steam continues to heat up until it reaches 125 degrees Celsius. At this point, the steam turbine begins to work. It removes the hot steam from the chamber and turns it back into water, and as such stabilizes the temperature in the aqua tuner chamber at around 125 degrees. This turbine serves as the cooling source for the aqua tuner and prevents it from overheating. The cooling power of the turbine far exceeds the heat output of the aqua tuner, however, and it is possible to transfer other heat sources through the steam chamber and use the turbine to cool them, in addition to the, to the aqua tuner. So, that is the general idea of the aqua tuner loop. Now, let's talk about the piping system and handling the coolant. Now, we can divide the piping system into three parts the aqua tuner piping, the cooling target, and the coolant storage and distribution. So let's start with the aqua tuner piping. When liquid needs to be cooled, it is sent into an array of components, which are responsible for managing the temperature of the liquid. Those components are the aqua tuner, a liquid thermosensor, and a liquid shutoff valve. Now, the liquid shutoff valve and the aqua tuner are connected in the form of a loop with the sensor between them. When the liquid enters this loop from this bridge, it is first sent into the aqua tuner and it is cooled down. The aqua tuner then outputs this liquid through the sensor. The sensor controls the valve and it is measures the temperature of the liquid passing through. If the temperature of the liquid is higher than the value set on the sensor, it will activate the liquid shutoff valve and send the liquid back into the aqua tuner for another round of cooling. Then the liquid passes another temperature check on its way out. If the temperature of the liquid is lower than the value set on the sensor, then the liquid valve will remain deactivated and the liquid will exit the loop and proceed towards the cooling target. The cooling target represents the object we intend to cool. It could be a machine, a room or perhaps another type of liquid or gas. In this example, the cooling target being a section of my base right over here. And finally, the coolant storage and distribution connect both pieces. It is composed of two liquid reservoirs, a liquid thermosensor and a liquid shutoff valve. So the liquid begins its journey in the left reservoir. As it exits this reservoir, it passes through a liquid thermosensor and it, its temperature is checked. If the temperature is above the set value on the sensor, it is sent into the left reservoir via the liquid shutoff valve and from the left reservoir into the aqua tuner for cooling. 
and once it's cold enough, it will be sent into the cooling target. However, if its temperature is below the set value, then it will be sent directly into the cooling target instead. After the liquid passes through the cooling target, it returns to the left liquid reservoir all the way over here, and on the way it passes through the steam turbine and cools it as well. Now, both the output of the aqua tuner loop pipe and the liquid reservoir pipe merge into one, but the aqua tuner loop pipe has priority over the reservoir pipe, which is accomplished by using liquid bridges. In other words, if both pipes are filled with liquid, then the liquid coming out of the aqua tuner will first enter the pipe, while the liquid in the reservoir pipe will wait its turn. Only when the aqua tuner pipe is empty can the liquid inside the reservoir pipe pass through the junction and enter the pipe. Now, both liquid reservoirs serve two goals. Number one, they ensure fluid liquid flow through the system. If there is a large amount of liquid waiting to be cooled by the aqua tuner, then instead of sitting in the pipes and clogging the entire system, it is instead stored inside the liquid reservoir. The reservoir essentially serves as a buffer this way. The second one is they allow you to easily drain the liquid out of the pipes in the case of changing your cooling target, making changes to the pipes, or changing the type of liquid. It is done by turning them off. For example, if I want to extend this cooling pipe towards uh, another section of my base, I can just deactivate both of those liquid reservoirs, which will remove the coolant from the pipes, store it into the liquid reservoirs, and then I can safely deconstruct pipes and make changes. Once I'm done, I can just activate the pipes and release the coolant. Next, let's go over the rest of the overlays. So, first of all, we got our power. Nothing too special here. We have the main power grid connected directly to the steam turbine, a transformer feeding both liquid shutoff valves and aqua tuner, and that's pretty much it. Next, we have our automation. Nothing much going in the automation. Uh, the shutoff valves are controlled by the uh, liquid thermosensors, and that's, that's about it. The important thing to mention is both of those sensors needs to be on the same value. Both are set on above, and when you set a desired temperature, it is important to set the same value on both sensors. So that's pretty much everything on both of those layers. And finally, let's talk about building materials and the steam turbine enclosure. Now the most temperature sensitive pieces here are the aqua tuner and the liquid shutoff valve inside the steam chamber. The materials needed for them is either gold or steel, and it depends on what you use the steam chamber for. Now, in this example, the steam chamber is used for the aqua tuner only, which means the temperature in it will never stray too far from 125 degrees. This means that gold can be used to construct the aqua tuner, but the liquid shutoff valve must always be constructed with steel, since we don't have gold amalgam as construction option for the liquid shutoff valve. So contrary to what I did here, this liquid shutoff valve must be made out of steel. However, if you intend to transfer more heat in, into this chamber besides the aqua tuner and heat the steam to higher temperatures, you might need to use steel instead if the steam temperature is able to rise above 175 degrees, the overheat limit for gold. Another consideration to make is whether to enclose the turbine inside the chamber filled with hydrogen or not. Generally, turbines are enclosed in hydrogen uh, isolated chambers when they work for long periods of time at maximum power, since at this state they generate a lot of heat, and hydrogen has better characteristics for cooling than oxygen. As a rule of thumb, I generally do not enclose single turbines in hydrogen chambers since they don't output a lot of heat and there is no issue cooling them. However, when several turbines operate at maximum power at the same time, 
it is advised to enclose them in hydrogen. So, to illustrate all of this, I would like to show you several applications of the aquatuner cooling loop and the decision making that was involved in the, in the material choosing and the turbine enclosure. So, our first example is the one we started the video with. Its purpose is to cool my base all the way over here. This is the cooling target. The cooling pipes passes through the majority of my base. Now, the temperature of the steam is steady at around 125 degrees, and as such, I made the aqua tuner out of gold and the valve out of steel. The steam turbine here barely even works. It generates minimal amount of heat, and therefore I chose to leave it in the open. Our second example is a magma volcano tamer. Here, magma exchanges heat directly with the steam and heats it up to temperature of around 200 degrees Celsius. In this case, the material used for the aqua tuner and the valve is steel. This tamer also has three steam turbines operating at maximum power for extended periods of time. They generate large amount of heat and require large amount of cooling. Therefore, I enclose them in hydrogen. The piping system is exactly the same. We have our distribution, our two liquid reservoirs over here, the aqua tuner loop over there, the bridge priority, and the cooling target uh, marked by radiant pipes. And that's all there is to say about the aqua tuner cooling loop. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, then please post them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And to wrap everything up, my duplicants will demonstrate the construction for the basic aqua tuner cooling loop from scratch. So for me, thanks for watching and enjoy the clip.